uh, yesterday, 30 minutes into our show, I got a text that Tom Brady was going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not a place I ever saw as a front runner. I went with it. It was a celebrity slash um, wealthy source of the few friends I have who are up in that stratosphere. This was one of them. He's a friend. He called and he said, Brady's going to the Buccaneers. I said, really? And he said, yeah, it came down to the Dolphins. It came down to the Chargers and it came down to Tampa Bay. So I texted him, John Goulet created this music bed. So when I have to go to my phone during the show, uh, I can at least, uh, the audience knows it's a signal that I am getting. Yeah, it's this. That means I'm on my phone getting a text. So this happened yesterday, 30 minutes into the show. And I said, I've never used a source who's not a football source to break a massive football story. But I, you know, I went with it. And we were right, about six hours ahead of everybody else. Doesn't really matter in the end, but that's what happened yesterday if you did not listen to our show. Let me say this. Um, I worked in Tampa for two years. I loved covering the team. Tampa Bay, there's a lot of five or six, seven irrelevant franchises in the NFL on a yearly basis. Tampa Bay should not be. Cleveland ownership in and out of coaches, in and out of quarterbacks, in and out of GMs. Good God, since Baker Mayfield arrived. Three coaches, interim coaches, numerous GMs. There's a reason they're bad. They're dysfunctional in ownership. Washington Redskins, there's a reason they're dysfunctional. The owner is a meddler. Uh, Then there's organizations like Cincinnati. They're cheap. They just don't have a lot of money. Then there's organizations like Jacksonville. They're just apathy. They're now playing games regularly in London, more than one this year. Tampa shouldn't be this bad. They've had great coaches. John Gruden, Sam Weish, Tony Dungy, Bruce Arians. They've had Hall of Fame players. They've had, they won a Super Bowl. They've got passionate fans. Stadium can be packed. They have great facilities. They should not be bundled up in this Cleveland, this kind of malaise of apathy and weak ownership. Their owners are not poor. I know the Glazer family. I love the kids. Didn't know the dad particularly well. But when I worked there for two years, the front office was smart. The players were good. The coaching was excellent. This was not Cleveland. This was not Washington. This is not Detroit. It's not cheap Cincinnati. What has held them back? Quarterback. In the, since 1976, since Tampa's been a franchise, their passer rating last in the NFL, 73. Completion percentage, this is hard to get your arms around, last 56%. <laughs> Their quarterbacks have thrown 830 touchdowns and 852 <laughs> picks. This is, you know how franchises say, we are just a quarterback away. Tampa is. They're last in everything, in quarterback. They've got a wealthy owner, passionate fans, smart people in the front office. They've had great coaches. They've won a Super Bowl. They've had great players. When I was a kid growing up, we didn't have a pro football team in Seattle. Then we got one in 1976, 77 season. Seattle got one. Jim Zorn, Sherman Smith, Steve Largent. It was an offensive team. Couldn't stop a nosebleed. Tampa was the opposite. Tampa had the Selman brothers. They were great defensively. They couldn't score. If you'd have just been able to combine the two. So I've been following Tampa forever. They were the team that came in with my Seahawks. And then I went and worked with them and had a blast. It was well run, smart people. But they never could get the quarterback right. I was looking this morning. That's why why Brady's going to fix this thing. Their first quarterback was Steve Spurrier. Way better coach than quarterback. Then they went to Randy Hedberg. Boy, those were the days. Doug Williams was solid, not spectacular. Then they had a bunch of Steve DeBergs, Jack Thompson, Vinny Testaverde for a few years. Back to Steve DeBerg, Trent Dilfer, my buddy. I I covered those teams. Sean King, Brad Johnson, 
Brian Greasy, Chris Sims, Byron Leftwich. They had the Josh Freeman years, Jameis Winston. They don't have one great, great quarterback ever. The Super Bowl, they won with Brad Johnson. His nickname, perhaps mean-spirited, was Captain Checkdown. They, they're the only franchise. They're it. Every other franchise has had a guy. One. Steve Young played for about an hour there. That doesn't count. So last year is so classic Tampa. They were 7-9. and nine. Six of their nine losses, touchdown or less, in the game late. In those six losses, 12 turnovers. <laughs> Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston had 30 picks last year. In the last four years, Tom Brady's had 29. So Jameis had more last year than Brady's had in almost half a decade. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the one franchise that can say, you know what, we're a quarterback away. And they have been, mostly for the last 30 years. And now they've got one. He's a leader. He's a winner. He is accurate. He doesn't make big mistakes. He's great at the line. They are the one franchise where I look at and go, good Lord, if they could just get a quarterback. They never have. You think Chicago, Miami have had their problems? You think you think Denver's had their problems post-John Elway? They've had talented guys. They had Peyton Manning. Got Tebow even won there. Yo, Miami post-Dan Marino. They've had some interesting players. Tannehill wasn't bad. Tannehill would arguably be as good as anybody Tampa's ever had. He's up there with Doug Williams. Better than Josh Freeman. His career's better than Trent Dilfer. He's a better player than Brad Johnson. So Brady's going to work. Are they going to win a ton of games? I don't know, but they got the weapons. Join our Facebook group, the loyal followers of the herd, so you can join the conversation. We're going to do this every week on Facebook Watch right here. McIntyre tease me up. I'm interested to see if I can beat the public. I should, I should be able to beat the public. I am paid to beat the public, so here we go. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.